Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today I'm sharing with you the five bags from my collection that I use the least amount. And I'm not going to be including evening or occasion pieces because that just goes without saying that I won't be using those. I am actually going to do this per brand as inspired by Nick Snell from the channel Living Life Loud with NJS. Nick was like, I've got so many bags of the same style. Maybe I will do my least used bags from each of the brands that I own. I thought, brilliant idea, because I did not know how to approach this video. I was tagged by the fabulous, or the fan dabby dozy, I should say, styled by Gwenny. I'll link both Gwenny and Nick's channels in the description box below. I'm going to be sharing with you my least used bags from my Fendi collection, my Louis Vuitton collection, and my Chanel collection, and my Gucci collection. So stick around. Okay, uh, I might be breaking one of my rules already, but for Gucci, I have decided to talk about this particular bag, but I tend to wear this more for occasion wear, so maybe just throw out what I said before. Um, I'm talking about my Gucci mini bamboo handle bag. I love this bag but I do tend to use it for occasion wear, evenings out. Um, I do love to contrast it with a pink top. Um, I just, I don't know why I haven't reached for it. I think I've bought a lot of occasion bags in the last kind of, you know, six to 12 months, I suppose. Um, and for that reason, this one's probably not getting much time. However, in saying that, I don't care. I think that this is one of those pieces that is a really special part of my luxury collection. I love to wear this crossbody and I love to wear it handheld. I said I love to contrast it with a pink top. Um, I love to wear it with jeans and heels. Um, it's a great little bag to carry around and my iPhone 13 Pro fits inside of this bag. I've actually had a few people ask me, you know, does a phone fit? The other thing that's great about this bag, I thought I would actually use the Aphidia strap more often, but I actually use the green leather strap more often. So it has two straps that both can adjust to a great crossbody length on me, and I'm five foot five and a half. Inside, it has two card holders, and it's just like a canvas fabric kind of interior, which means that you really don't have to take a card holder. You can just pop your cards in, throw in a phone, your keys and some lippies and you're done i've never had a problem with capacity for this bag when i've worn it out for an evening but um yeah i have to say it um it saddens me to say i haven't worn it very often but it does not change my love for the bag the bag will be staying in my collection and i love the fact that they're bringing them out in so many beautiful colors i still love the white one in the small size but it is so much bigger in terms of capacity it comes with a little mirror but it's really heavy too so it would definitely be a hand carry but this gorgeous little modern twist on a vintage style i think it's just delightful so yeah um my little gucci mini bamboo handle bag in gray the next brand is chanel and you know, Chanel and I, we've had a really interesting relationship since I started buying luxury pieces. Initially, I was enamored with Chanel. I bought a lot of Chanel classic pieces and I have sold them all. Um, if you're interested in hearing about those, then I'll link some videos in the description box below where I talk about all the classics that I have sold, bought and sold. So I am coming from an informed perspective and my own personal preference. Um, but it really surprised me that one of my least used luxury handbags, and I'm just going to pull it all out from Chanel, and I think I've got about, you know, six or seven pieces from Chanel, is this one. This is otherwise known as the Emily in Paris bag because the first season of Emily in Paris, this bag was featured and everyone went wild about it. And I got a lot of um, messages on Instagram DMs asking if I would sell this piece. It was marketed in the fall winter 2019, I think, part A, is that how it goes? As the mini flat bag with coin purse. Um, it is a gorgeous dark beige. I think it's tan, but they call it dark beige with this antique gold hardware. There's a lot of Chanel details on this bag. You can see each of the grommets say Chanel 31 Rue Cambon. 
This little coin pouch is detachable. It sits at the perfect crossbody length for me. I mentioned my height before. And there's a leather break in the chain that makes it super wearable. There's a lot of details on this bag. You've got CCs on the grommets on the back. Rivets, I should say, not grommets. And inside it is a beautiful kind of maroon suede leather. There's one slip pocket on the inside. And again, it fits all your essentials. Why haven't I been wearing this bag? Oh, again, I have no good reason. I just have a lot of summer bags. This, I mean, it was a full winter style, but I definitely use this as a summer bag. Um, it's a really hardy kind of calf skin. Um, I love, I, I love everything about this piece. It matches perfectly with my Hermes Iran sandals, which I wear pretty much every day in summertime. Um, I just, I've been reaching for those more textured raffia straw wicker pieces that I love so much. Um, and yeah, this one's kind of been neglected. I feel like this would be another great option to take away with me on holiday when I go. But I did buy the Prada for that purpose. But maybe, you know, it's a small bag. I could slip it inside of another bag, perhaps because I feel like this bag would be right at home in Sicily on a summer's day, right? So yeah, I've got some thinking to do about this one as well. Okay, so I'm going back to my original rules. Um, my least used piece from my Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton? From my Louis Vuitton collection, which is rather more extensive than both Gucci and Chanel, is um, surprisingly to me, my Never Fall World Tour. This is the MM size in monogram with black leather straps. This was my first Never Fall um, and obviously I enjoyed the World Tour edition and customised it with a bunch of different um, stickers and things that, you know, I guess things that I love, a little luggage tag, a dog, um, a pink, a, a pink sticker um, that's got like a lot of Louis Vuitton um, boutiques on it, a name tag, and then we have, you know, more pink, I guess. So I'm kind of using this one as storage at the moment. It's got a bunch of things in it, including a color wheel. It's got my um, Louis Vuitton pencil case in it. It's got a bunch of receipts and post-it notes. This one also came with the little pochette. Um, it's in great condition. I don't know. I guess being a world tour, it's one of those ones that's a bit hard to sell. And it's the only tote that I have in this size um, that's, oh, well, it's not actually. I have my Balenciaga Hacker Project tote. So I've got two totes in this size. I was actually thinking about selling one of them, but I'm not sure if a never fall with my name on it. Like I can have that scratched off, but yeah, I, I think it would, this one would have to stay with me, right? So probably my Hacker Project tote would go. But um, yeah, it's, it's the, since I got the GM, it's really just not really been picked up very often at all. I take it sometimes when I want something a little bit fun and playful, like a little bit of pink um, because my outfit looks pretty serious. Um, that's my undone component. But yeah, it's actually quite surprised me that this bag went from being one of my most used bags to being my least used from my Louis Vuitton collection. And because Fendi is the brand that I have the most amount of bags from, I'm picking two from Fendi. Now, one will surprise you and one probably won't. I'll show you the one that will surprise you last. How about that? Okay, so the first one is my mohair baguette. I bought this one back in January because I fell in love with it. It is just divine. It is so beautiful. But we're just starting to get the weather here now where this bag is really going to start earning its dollars. The return on investment for this bag will take many years to come through, but that doesn't make her any less beautiful or valuable to me in my eyes. This is all 
fluffy fluffy mohair with dark brown leather trim the gold baguette buckle as you you know would be familiar and then it's got a longer shoulder strap as well i've got an organizer inside of mine from zamoni and i love that it's got the zucker on the inside of the bag i don't have any baguettes with zucker on the inside except for this one so that's a really really lovely touch i think that this bag was going to come to melbourne with me when i went in april but the forecast was for rain and i just thought that is like that's it's going to take up room in my luggage and i'm not going to take it out so i will take some bags that i'm more inclined to wear than one that's just going to take up room so I am really looking forward to styling this bag up as our days are getting cooler and the coats and the fluffy jumpers and things are coming out as well. <laughs> so this, this one is, it's time to fess up. The least used bag in my Fendi collection, which is my largest collection, is the bag that um, started my channel. It's my peekaboo in the off-white, in the celery style with the silver hardware, palladium hardware, Fendi call it. Um, I love the Fendi mini peekaboos and I especially love the celery style and I love how fresh and white this bag is. I still love this bag. I have been using my lilac peekaboo, I see you in this small a lot. When I've gone to pick a peekaboo, I will pick this one and then I'll go to lilac. And I think that's just because lilac is my colour. Like I, you know, I, <laughs> did I mention I like lilac? Um, and so when I'm going to go for this kind of shape of bag, I tend to always pick that one. And I think also because it has the smile, whereas this one, I don't think will get the smile. This one still has a really important part to play in my overall collection though because it's a nice clean white handbag and it definitely is a perfect fit for some outfits. It's just competing with a lot of really loud individualistic crazy pieces. That's me thinking as I talk. Um, but yeah, it's quite funny, like three years on starting a channel about this bag and then this being one of the least used bags in my collection. I guess that's how it goes. As you start to build confidence and your tastes and your personal style evolves, you're more happy to put money into things that probably don't make a lot of, say, financial sense in terms of resale or what have you but you really enjoy wearing them. And I think this was a really sensible decision for me to make at the time. And now I'm more inclined to make, you know, dopamine driven decisions, if that makes sense. But um, nonetheless, all of the pieces that I've mentioned will be remaining in my collection. I love them all. There's a lot more that I don't use very often, but as I mentioned, I tend to see them more as occasion bags or statement bags. And my collection is kind of going that way I suppose so it's more of a collection of beautiful things that are somewhat practical um, but yeah I've actually enjoyed the challenge of kind of going through and identifying some of these pieces and thinking really honestly about you know what role they play in my collection I actually have been jotting down a list of bags that I'd probably be okay to let go um, and I will make a video about those. I am actually considering inviting Connor over to do a little bit of a closet um, cleanse, kind of like how Cassie did with Christian. Um, I really enjoyed that process of the, the really this brutally like, honest really challenge. I thought that was a really great idea and Connor's got a very it's logical fine. approach it's to fine. his it's collection fine. and yeah. normally when I'm talking to him about things that I like, He's very quick to point out why they would or would not be a good decision. So, yeah. Hey, Connor, FYI, that video is going to happen soon, so be ready, okay? Um, I've got to tag some people um, to complete this one. Normally, I would tag my good friend Meredith, but she has so many bags that most of them would be on her least used list. So, I think that um, I will not tag Meredith for this one. I will tag Connor, definitely. I will also tag, hmm, I'll tag, um, if you haven't done it already, Heidi from Simply Her Perspective. She's probably already been tagged. However, Amelia from Amelia Rose's Closet. 
And yeah, I think that'll do for this one. Um, so if you've already done it, apologies. If you haven't done it and you'd like to do it and I didn't tag you and nobody else has tagged you, consider yourself tagged. Um, sometimes when you're starting out in YouTube, a tag videos are a really good way to bring content that's relevant and currently being watched and therefore you'll get recommended. So if you're a new YouTuber um, and you want to do this tag, definitely do it. Tag me and I'll share your video. Um, I think that's everything. If you've liked this video, if there have been any surprises, please um, give me a thumbs up. Tell me what they are in the comment section down below. I put out long format videos on Wednesdays and Sundays and sometimes some extras. I'd love to see you back here next time. Until then, ciao.